Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to my review of the second 60th anniversary special, Wild Blue Yonder. Now there's a funny thing that I've noticed, people who really like the Star Beast didn't like Wild Blue Yonder and the people who didn't like the Star Beast seem to really like Wild Blue Yonder and in this example, I would say that's true. Wild Blue Yonder for me is not faultless by any stretch of the imaginations and I do have a few things that I will talk about and criticise it for but I've got to say, for me this is the best episode of Doctor Who that we have had in years. This to me felt like a traditional Doctor Who story, you know the whole base under siege style thing. I also really liked that at times it felt like the characters were isolated. I thought it had some chilling moments. I thought it had some creepy moments as well. I thought the performances from David and Catherine were genuinely fantastic. And the fact that they're playing two parts in this story just emphasized that even more. I, I thought it was a genuinely great story. But it's me, right? I'm obviously going to have some negatives, so let's just get them out of the way. First and foremost, the Isaac Newton scene. Let's address the elephant in the room, because obviously lots of people have been discussing it. And I've got to say, I have an issue with it. And some of you, before you cancel me, just hear me out, because it's, it's an interesting thing that I have to say. Probably, probably not. The Isaac Newton scene I had a problem with, because it doesn't need to be there. Like, there's no reason for that to be in this story whatsoever. It felt like it was put there for the sake of it. It didn't add anything to the story. It didn't add anything to the rest of the specials. Well, the last special. It just felt like a pointless scene. It's like, oh look, we've met Isaac Newton for five seconds and the Mavity thing. It didn't work. It was unnecessary. It just felt like the rest of the story had a purpose and you know why it was there, whether you liked it or not. But this just felt like Russell didn't have enough for like 45 minutes of material. So just chuck something in at the beginning just to pad time. There was no need for it. And I know there's been controversy of people saying like, oh, they've race swapped the actor. And to be honest, I think maybe the only reason why they did it is because it get people talking about it. Because otherwise, who the fuck could mention this scene? Odd, odd choice putting this in the episode. Weird. And then the second thing that I have a major complaint with, and again, if you have watched my channel for a long time, you will understand why I take issue with this. So before anybody cancels me and says I'm whatever, you will know that I have no interest and no desire to see the Doctor romantically interested in anybody. I, I don't see the Doctor as that sort of character. I don't think adding a relationship to him, adding sexual preferences to him, adds anything to the character. I think the fact that he is obviously a time traveller but a brilliant scientist, he's a genius, he makes mistakes but he's also witty and he's clever and all these sort of things. He's got enough as a character. He doesn't need to fall back on romantic interests. So if people are going to give me shit and say, oh, it's only because he said he liked guys. No, it's nothing to do with that. Again, watch any of my videos where I've spoken about this before. I didn't like it when it was Grace, when it was Rose, whether it was River Song. You pick a character. And also the retroactive things that we've done where apparently the Doctor was in love with Joe Grant and Ace and... Jamie and all these no <laughs> No, so I hate it and this line in here one pissed me off because again I don't like the doctor romantically involved with anybody but two Makes no sense and the reason why it makes no sense is because it's coming from Donna where the doctor makes a reference to Isaac Newton Maybe that's why the scene was there so they can add in this line that would piss people off and the doctor says that he thinks that Isaac Newton was hot and he's like oh is that who I am now and Donna says it's always been there on the surface. Now again, this line makes no sense because the last time that Donna saw the Doctor and remembered him, he was clearly very much infatuated with Rose to the point where she saw the Doctor run to her because he loved her. Now, either Donna forgot that or Russell forgot that or maybe Russell's trying to imply that Billy Piper looks like a bloke. Either way, this doesn't make sense and I didn't like it, it didn't need to be there. The one or the negative, and it is a slight nitpick, and I often say you shouldn't hold Doctor Who's production values against it, but I have to address this because we know that there's Disney money. I did think that the CGI in places looked properly ropey, 
and it was very obvious that they were just stood on a little bit of the corridor and the rest of it was CGI. Everything else, I genuinely really, really enjoyed. This story felt atmospheric. It felt claustrophobic at times. I liked the fact that they split the Doctor and Donna and they had to deal with their own things themselves. I like the fact that we're at the very edge of the universe and anything can happen there and even the Doctor isn't sure. The stuff with the salt I thought was brilliant. I loved the antagonists as well, that the more you think and the faster that you think, the more that they will copy you and replicate you. I thought that was genius and I especially really like the scene where they say this and they figured it out and the doctor's just like, yeah, but why? Why is this going on? And he has to think even more because that's exactly what the doctor would do. I thought the characterization of both the doctor and Donna in this episode were a lot better than the previous episode. I thought some of the lines of dialogue and their chemistry wasn't quite there. It didn't feel like it did back in series four. However, in this episode, it really, really did. And one thing that I did enjoy, obviously it wasn't the real Donna, but I did like seeing the Doctor be so vulnerable when he's talking about what's been going on since he last saw Donna. And then that sort of rug pull where it isn't the real Donna and he's like, I opened up for nothing. The concept of my arms are too long as well, that creepy line, that was great. Again, it feels like proper old school good Doctor Who. It's an idea that isn't necessarily the most original. We've seen doppelgangers in Doctor Who before. I'm pretty sure even Russell himself has done it in episodes before, but it didn't feel like a rehashed idea. It felt like a refreshed take on the doppelganger sort of thing. And I thought both of them played it fantastically, whether it's their actual selves or the evil ones. I like the fact that the evil ones grew bigger and couldn't quite get a grip of their bodies yet. And it was slightly unnerving, like with the jaw, like with the arms, like I mentioned before. Just things like that, it worked really well. You didn't really know where the story was gonna go. Now, the thing with the robot and being really slow somewhat didn't make sense because they can't read a machine's mind so the machine could have just done it in real time and they wouldn't have suspected anything i think i don't know that's a nitpick and i can gloss over that because it did add a layer of drama to the story when it came to the climax about the ship being blown up and obviously towards the end of it the doctor picks the wrong donna maybe i'm just morbid but i thought it would have been really interesting if he stuck with his decision because it didn't really quite work for me. Again, this is a nitpick and trust me, I did love this story. I'm not just trying to be negative on purpose. But it didn't quite make sense to me because the evil Donna got into the TARDIS and I don't think he even looked at her, he just booted her out. So why did he pick her in the first place? I know he said about, oh, the arm was sort of like a, a couple of centimeters out or you know something like that. But either way, it would have been interesting to see if he stuck with it and he did genuinely make the wrong decision and he got Donna killed. But overall, I thought the story itself and the plot, the pacing, the writing, the dialogue, the acting, for the most part, obviously, because there was a, a few lines and scenes that didn't work for me, as I said at the start of this review, but overall, I genuinely loved it. And then, and then, not only did I watch a story that I was genuinely interested in, that I genuinely enjoyed and hadn't enjoyed Doctor Who like that for years, the final scene, one last scene with Wilfred Mott, it was, so bittersweet seeing Bernard Cribbins again. He still got that twinkle in his eye. Obviously he passed away whilst they were still filming so he couldn't do any more scenes for the giggle which I'm assuming he was going to do. But it was such a nice touch to just see him because I don't know, maybe production teams out of respect would have cut those scenes because obviously the actors passed away. But I'm glad that they didn't. I'm glad that they kept them in because Bernard deserved to have his final work out there on TV and we as fans are absolutely honored to see it and even though the scene itself isn't the most remarkable bit of Doctor Who that we have ever had it was just nice to see him again alongside Catherine Tate and alongside David Tennant and so Bernard Cribbins may you rest in peace. Overall though guys I think I will give Wild Blue Yonder an eight and a half out of ten. I fucking loved it. It's got its issues, not many, but the issues I can overlook for the most part because the rest of the story was so, so solid. And even though it didn't really play into the overall narrative of the 60th anniversary, it was just a damn good episode of Doctor Who. And at this stage, 
I'll fucking take it. In the comments below though, guys, let me know what you thought of Wild Blue Yonder. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever it is, let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe for more social media and Patreon links and all the other fucking things will be in the description below. So if you'd follow me on any of those things, then I'd absolutely love you forever. But until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Someone remembered their outro. It's almost like I've not even been away and watched old videos to remember what I said after fucking it up in the last one. Oops.